In this video, we'll start learning about the mixer section in Reason. And because there's a lot to cover on the mixer, we'll spend the next three videos covering the mixer section. Now, as we've learned, we can access the mixer window with our trusty function key, F5. If the mixer is hidden, just tap F5 to show and maximize it. The mixer section is also a section which you can detach from the main song window, just by clicking this detach button here. Now it's its own floating window. If you have two displays or a very large display, you could move it into its own space so it doesn't have to share with your main song window. Now there are a few ways to navigate within the mixer. On the far right hand side of the mixer, you have the navigator. And this is very much like the rack navigator and the sequence navigator. This navigator shows us a vertically zoomed out view of an entire channel strip. If I click and drag my mouse up or down, it'll scroll the mixer view up and down vertically. If my mixer was too large to view all of the channels, I'd have a scroll bar down at the bottom. Let's expand the browser as an example. You'll see now that I can't see all of the pieces in the mixer and I have a scroll bar that I can move left and right to see my various channels. Of course, you probably won't have the browser open that wide. Within the mixer, there are two basic sections. You have the channel section and then you have the master section. And let's learn about channels first. Each channel in the mixer interacts directly with a sequencer track and a rack item. Let's take a look at what that means. I'll show all three primary sections and let's look at a track. If I click on this instrument track in the sequencer, it brings the rack device it's using into focus. And if you notice, when I click it again, that channel strip kind of blinks in the mixer. And this tells us that this instrument track is sending note information for this device to play, and this device is being routed to this channel. The same applies to an audio track. If I select an audio track, the rack device for that audio track is shown here. This is simply and primarily here to route to a mixer channel. And again, if I click on it, we'll see that mixer channel blink. So track goes to rack, rack items go to the mixer. So by default, each track in a Reason song has its own mixer channel and the most recognizable portion of the mixer is the fader section. So each channel has its own fader. The fader controls volume or loudness of each individual channel device and track. If we simply play some of the song, we can see how this works. The faders simply allow you to blend the volume or loudness of each individual track independently of the other tracks. This is what most people visualize when they think of a mixer. And you probably noticed while playing that just to the left of the faders, each channel has its own level meters. So I'll play it again, watch this rhythm guitar track and the meters as I adjust the volume. gives you a visual of how loud or how soft a track is playing. Just above our channel faders, we have additional controls on each channel. We have mute and solo. Mute will turn the track off or stop it from playing. It's very similar to the mute and solo controls in the sequencer, but it does operate independently of those controls. And of course, the solo button mutes all other tracks, leaving this track to play alone. With respect to these mute and solo buttons, there's a handy tool in the master section, most of which we'll get to later. But if I solo a track, we can see these controls here. Solo all off. By clicking this, any track that is soloed is unsoloed. This is especially handy if you have a lot of tracks and channels. You can't see all of the channels. You see that something is soloed, you can't immediately find it. Just click this handy button. And the same applies to mute all off. So if you have a lot of tracks and you can't see them all immediately in the mixer, Maybe one's muted and you don't see it over there. I can click Mute All Off to make sure that all tracks are unmuted. Just above the Mute and Solo button on each channel, you have a pan control, and that's this knob here. This pan control allows you to change the left and right balance on each channel. Just by clicking and dragging down, I could move the pan to the left side, left speaker, or drag my mouse up to pan to the right side. If I pan it all the way right, I would only hear this channel in my right speaker but I could blend it in so it's a little more to the right, a little less to the left. You'll notice that some of these pan controls look a little different. 
Some of them have a little red ring or partial ring around them, and that's because these are stereo channels. This red ring indicates how wide the stereo field is, and that's controlled by this width knob that's also in each stereo track. If I click and drag my mouse up, I increase the stereo width of this channel. As I pan the stereo track to the left, it will be a little louder on our left side or left speaker, but the stereo width is still reasonably wide. As I narrow the width, it will change the stereo image so it appears, so to speak, to be on the left side. Using pan is a great mixing technique. It allows you to move instruments around in space so that the listener perceives there are musicians playing instruments in different areas as if they were on stage or in a room. Now that we've covered some of the basics of the mixer section, starting with the channel section, let's continue to the next video, where we'll learn more about channels including EQ, dynamics, and inserts. See you there!